Hello there, Richard the Dick Coughlin, triple zero, how are you? Today I thought I would bring you not just one ponage video, but two for the price of one. Oh yes, you lucky people. And there's a bit at the end, so don't go after that's all finished. Now, I was sent this story yesterday by several people, mainly asking if I had an opinion on this, what I thought it was about, and I thought I would comment on it. Now, the first thing about this story is it's regarding a guy called Anjum Chowdhury, who I'm sure you're probably all familiar with. Anjum Chowdhury is the leader of a militant Islamic group here in the UK called Islam for UK and membership to their organisation was banned and made illegal back in 2010 after it found he had links to certain terrorist organisations and blah blah blah. Whilst there are people out there who like to put Anjum Chowdhury up as the poster boy for Islam, what you understand is Anjum Chowdhury is a bit like the Fred Phelps of Islam, right? He's all mouth and no real trousers, right? He's just an attention whore and he does whatever he does, he does it to get people to pay attention to him. He's like any other other religious nutbag, he's full of shit, he's a hypocrite, he's a bigot, and he's an arsehole. His group, um, which are now obviously operating on some underground level, apparently are going around certain areas of London and putting up these Sharia controlled zone stickers. Or these little stickers, about this big. I'll show you a picture of one here. But that's the sticker. They're putting it here saying, was Islamic rules enforced here? And they're putting these stickers around. Now, I'm willing, I'm perfectly happy to believe that this is a true story. There is one problem, however, it was a story that was linked by the Daily Mail, um, who are not the most reliable source when it comes to stories on, well, anything really, even if the fucking... I bought a copy of the Daily Mail the other day and it was so full of shit that it said Daily Mirror on top of it, right? These fucking things, they're full of crap, right? There are points in this story that I find somewhat dubious. Now, for a start, the main problem I have are two pictures here, I'll show you them here, right? This is one of the guys, a member of... Islam for UK. Apparently his name is Jamal Udin. I have to ask, when did Copper Cab become a member of Islam for UK? Seriously? Ginger Muslims? Ginger. Oh uh, yeah. Muslimic gingers, right? You know, Copper Cab, I thought you were a Christian. That's what you said. I go to church. I'm a Christian. Or maybe is this you shouting Allah Akbar? <laughs> the other problem I've got though is the other, uh, th th that's the first one. Look at these ones. Now, I don't know about you, but is there something remarkably staged about these pictures. I like to see you lot fucking really try to stop people enjoying themselves in London, right? But there's something about these pi that these pictures are were taken by a da Daily Mail journalist and he's clearly posing for these. Now what this says to me is that Islam for UK contacted the Daily Mail, you know, said to them, do you want to come, you know, we're going to put these stickers up, do you want to come and film us doing it? They said, okay, they've taken some pictures. And they've sent them in. There's even a copyright for the guy, the journalist, who took the pictures for the Daily Mail. And I think Andrew Chowdhury is just butthurt that everyone's talking about this Anders Brevik guy and he wants to remind people, hey, we're dangerous too. You're just full of shit, Andrew. You know this. You've made this comment uh, saying, oh, you are, you know, you're having a, you're going to have be part of a protest against the far right. Can I point something out to you, Andrew? You are part of the far right, mate. It's hardly a very progressive fucking attitude you've got, Sunshine. Right? And you, you, ain't, you ain't with me, son. Right? You ain't with me. Right? You're, you're a fucking wanker. Right? And you're full of shit, and you know it. Because by your own logic, Andrew, I hate to point this out to you, uh, you want to ban smoking, drinking, music, um, pornography? By your logic, Andrew, you should be punished. Why? Because of these pictures here. This is a young Andrew Chowdhury smoking, drinking, and looking at pornography in a bar, which I assume had music playing. Right? You're just full of crap, mate. Give up. Either blow something up or shut the hell up, right? Please. Stop wasting our fucking time. Would you be scared? Are you scared of that guy? I ain't. <laughs> Moving on from that, I now want to talk about another guy, a favourite of mine, a guy I've dealt with in the past many times, and videos are all on this channel that I uh, dealt with him with, a guy called Martin J. Willett. Because I was linked to Martin J. Willett. He did a video on the Norway uh, incident. He called it Norway Atrocity. I had to make this video, I mean, not because I had to, not because what he said was so egregiously offensive to me, but it's just dumb, and it's Martin J. Willett. And I, I know that I annoy Martin J. Willett. He, you know, I, and Martin, I understand, in advance, I know you've got a wife. You've got a wife and a family, you don't have time for drama. You know, you made several videos in the past talking about how you didn't have time to make video responses. You sent me several and other people several PMs talking about how you're not interested in what we have to say. You know, you're just here to put your opinions across. You know, that's fine. I understand. You don't, you're not interested in criti criticism and people telling you you're wrong. I imagine after making this video, uh, shortly after this, you will put your, to say all your ratings and comments, or you'll go around and just delete the video I'll put it on private until the traffic slows down. Your balls are as non-existent as this guy's soul. <laughs> the first thing 
said, that I find funny, is he says that this is not a terrorist attack. He says it's not a terrorist attack, um, it's just a case of mass murder. Now, mass murder is not necessarily terrorism, but it is terrorism if it involves it, someone committing an act of mass murder for an ideological, political motivation which this guy did. That's what he did. That's what he did it for. That is the definition of terrorism. People committing acts of violence for a, an ideological, political, or religious, whatever motivation. But then, when people pointed this out to him and said that that is the definition of terrorism, his response was, well, it's not terrorism because he's been arrested so he no longer poses a threat. Well, neither do suicide bombers, Martin, once they've blown themselves up. And as Brevik hasn't blown himself up, he's been arrested. What if he escapes? What if he gets out? What if he's only given, like, 25, 30 years and he gets let out? Right, he's still, he's still a threat then, isn't he? Right, by your logic, you can't call any suicide bomber terrorists because once they've blown themselves up, they're not a threat anymore. Unless, of course, you're going to argue that, oh, because he's, they're part of a sort of, they're part of an ideology that actually has a name that you can put to it. Then that's then that's going to be your argument. Yeah. Well, then what you got to do is say people find people who have the same ideological or political beliefs that were expressed by Brevik, and we can label them and suspect them. Oh wait, that would include you, wouldn't it, Martin? That's probably why you don't want to label this guy a terrorist, because that would mean people have to stop and consider you. God forbid you should show any humility in the wake of of 75 people being massacred. Right, you're a dick, Martin. You're a dick and a knobhead. You know this. Anyway, now moving on to the final part of this video. I just, I just wanted to let you know that, um, as you know, I'm living in Scotland now. Um, but my girlfriend, Bronwyn Winter Phoenix, so I'll leave a link to her channel below. Um, she's a published author, uh, a proper published author, not like Brett Keane, right? She's the proper published author. And she has a third book coming out called Grass Market Blood. I'll leave links to uh, the uh, the book on Waterstones where you can go and have a look at it. I'll leave a link to an Amazon link as well. And uh, she's the book is released on the 6th of August, um, but she's also having a book launch on the 9th of August uh, in Edinburgh at the west on the uh, West End uh, Princess Street Waterstones. It's on August the 9th at 6 o'clock, uh, and you are, if you are in, if in or around Scotland and you want to come and uh, meet Mr. and Mrs. Dick um, at the book launch, uh, you're more than welcome to. As I say, 6 o'clock, 9th of August, uh, it's during the Edinburgh Festival as well, so there's going to be a lot of people around, so please, if you want to come along to that, feel free, go and check out the links below. And uh, that's all I've got to say, so it's been a pleasure talking to you, I hope I've dealt with everything sufficiently. Anyway, Richard the Dick Coughlin, triple zero, good night, may God be less.